Good morning, Foothills. I am Sharon Nicholson. I'm Jordan Fuller. We are so excited that you have tuned in with us this morning. We are starting a new series today. I'm excited about it. Yes, me too. It's called What is Love? And so we are going to be doing just that, digging in, um, talking more about God's love and the different characteristics of that and what that looks like. I am super pumped. Can't wait for that. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome, awesome day. And speaking of love, we love that you're hanging out with (laughs) us today. And if you are a first time guest here at Foothills, we'd love I'm going to drill this in the ground a lot. Let's count how many times we can say love. We'd love to connect (laughs) with you. So you can visit us online at foothills.cc slash connect. Fill out our online connect card. Let us know it's your first time watching. And we want to send you home with a free gift just to say thanks for spending the day with us. And thanks for hanging out with us. We'd also, we've got a team of prayer moderators. We've got a team of chat moderators here Mm -hmm. ready to chat with you, answer any questions you have about the service or to pray with you. It's, It's all there. So leave a direct message, leave a comment under the live video, and someone will be sure to reach out to you. Yeah, and we have so much going on. Um, One cool thing that we have on our website is our events page. So that's going to list out everything that um, we're about to hit and share with you. But if you forget any dates or anything that's going on, head over to foothills.cc slash events, and you'll be able to find everything there. Tomorrow, we're kicking off Sun Sports. So this is kind of our version of, if you remember, like Bible school, but it's way cooler so we have basketball soccer um what else volleyball cheerleading cheerleading Bas- you said basketball acting yeah. all, lots of stuff art we have and crafts arts and crafts and so that is starting tomorrow we're gonna have already we have over 400 kids signed up i'm sure maybe that number yeah, is it's, even it's growing. growing every day um and so it's gonna be a blast we're gonna be outside having fun all week we're gonna have worship it's gonna be incredible that starts again tomorrow goes through the ninth if you haven't signed up there's still time you can get signed up um, we would love to see you there absolutely and other things that we have coming up i always get to talk to you i tell you every time i get to talk about it is next <laughs> and it's coming up in june you can find all the information for that at foothills.cc slash events but here's what you need to know about next is if you're new at foothills you're looking to get connected or maybe you've been here for a while and you're just looking to get plugged in next is the class for you we meet at 12 30 p.m we have free food we have free child care you get to hear the mission and the vision of the mm-hmm. church from pastor kevin and pastor greg you're gonna meet some of the staff members yep. like us and you're gonna find out how to take your next steps how to get plugged in at Foothills Church, and it's going to be a good time. Yeah, you get to learn about groups. You get to learn about the different ministries. And again, you get to meet those leaders of those ministries, um, find out what you're passionate about, get plugged in. It's going to be awesome. And then the next Sunday, um, June 19th, we have baptism. Yes, so that is always a super exciting Sunday where we get to share in the life change that's going on right here inside Foothills Walls. And we get to celebrate with you when you've decided to take that next step and to make that um, commitment public and to say, hey, I've given my life to Jesus and I want everyone to know about it. We um, get to celebrate with you. It's always a party. Like baptism Sundays are a blast. And so we cannot wait for that. Also, that same day we have Father's Day. Jordan, you're a father. I hope you're excited. Father it's going to be, yes, it's going to be um, awesome. We're going to have um, some cool stuff for our men in the church that Sunday. So you will not want to miss that. Yeah, I want to tag back on to the baptism too is... Um, we had a story the last baptism that we had mm-hmm. of people who were watching online yes. and, yeah. and heard about the baptism through the pre-show and they came in and they decided to take that next That's step right. and, and pursue the relationship with Jesus and make that public. So if you're watching online, you can get in here, you can make that happen and we are here for you. So let us know again on the connect card. But yeah. We're getting close to service. We we, are. We're going to wrap it up. And uh, as always, grab your coffee, your snacks, your Bible highlighter, whatever you need. And we will meet you right back here after the service.
Good morning, Foothills. How y'all doing this morning? Ain't God good? Aren't you thankful for his love? Amen, amen. I'm Rod, one of the pastors here. You may be seated. Thank you so much for being here this morning. When you came in, you should have got a connection card. If you could, fill that out. You got a prayer request. That's a way just to connect with you, to find out what you need. We want to serve you in the best way possible. Church, we got a lot of events coming up. But one thing I do want to mention, for those for our first-time guests, guests, can we give a big Foothills welcome? Yes. To our first-time guests. Amen. I'm going to ask you to hang on to your connection card. I want to invite you to the guest room right after the service in the concourse. We've got a free gift from you. You get a chance to meet Pastor Greg, some of the staff, just to say thank you for your visit this morning. Church, how many know it's going to be a busy summer, right? Yeah. One way you can keep up is uh, go to our event page at foothills.cc slash events to find out everything that's going on throughout the summer, just to stay in connection, to stay, to find out what's the community and what's going on. A couple of things I want to mention. Tomorrow we start Sun Sports. Give it up. Yes. So we're going to have, listen to this, guys. We're going to have over 400 people, kids here on campus for Sun Sports. Give it up, right? Ain't God good? It's from Monday through Thursday, 8.30, and excuse me, 6.30 to 8.30. It's going to be great. Please pray for us. We're going to have that the community would be impacted by the message of Jesus, right? So just pray for us. It. It's going to be great. Also, June the 12th, we have our next class. If you've been here for two weeks, two months, NES is a um, conversational environment where we would talk about how Foothills got started, where we at right now, but more importantly, where we're going for the future. We're so excited to see what God is doing. You get a chance to hear from Pastor Greg and Pastor Kevin. But what I'm so excited about, you get to hear from all the ministries that go on here at Foothills. You get to hear from our worship director, you get to hear from our care pastor, our student pastor, you get to hear from everybody tech, arts, everything. So if you're on the fringe, you're thinking about, hey, I love Foothills. Foothills is my church. This is my community. I want to know what my next step is. Next class is for you. Again, that's June the 12th for you. And also coming up, June the 19th is Baptism Sunday. Yes. How many know that's a celebration, right? Yes. So for those who made a decision for Jesus, baptism is your next step. We want to celebrate with you celebrate with you. We're so excited. So again, that's June the 19th, Baptism Sunday. Church, I'm going to ask you to stand. Oh, I, I do want to remind you. As, you. as you stand, go ahead and stand up. Yes. I do want to remind you three ways you can give. Go ahead and stand up. Yes. I want to remind you three ways you can give. You can give online with it safe and secure at foothills.cc slash give. Also, you got a white box so you can drop your offering off on the way out and you can give through the Foothills app. Church, thank you so much. I'm going to pass it over to Lydia, and she's going to pray for you. If you love Rod, can you just give it up for Rod really quick? I just love him. But we're here this morning to worship the King of the Kings and the Lord of Lords, who loves us no matter what. I'm in awe all the time of when I think about him loving me, me, little old me, and I hope you never lose that sense of awe and wonder. I know I haven't. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for the way that you love us. Thank you for the way that you show up for us. God, when nobody else does, God, you're there. In the quiet moments, in the still moments, you're there. Doesn't matter what we do or what we've done, God, you're there and you love us. Thank you, God, for loving us. I'm in awe of you, God. Sing, I'll never be more loved. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I could do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. I've never been closer than you are.
This kind of love is who you are. It's a grace I can never add up to be somebody you still want. Somehow, you love me as you find. when you died for us. We thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. There is nothing else that deserves the affection of our heart above you, Jesus. It is you and you alone. And so this morning we're saying if you want our heart, we're not second guessing. We're not wasting our time on other things anymore. We want you, Jesus. We want you, Jesus. So this morning, our hearts are open. I pray that you would speak to every individual. You know what every individual in this room is carrying today. You know the areas of our hearts that are broken, that are needing a touch from our Heavenly Father. God, would you speak to our hearts today? And we're gonna respond with yes and amen the way that you respond. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. You guys can take a seat. Our worship team, didn't they do great leading us this morning? Yes. 
Man, there's some exciting things coming this week. Sun Sports is one of the biggest outreaches we do all year. And if you're not familiar with that, it's basically we use uh, sports as a backdrop. Well, actually, there's sports, there's arts and crafts, there's, I think there's acting, there's all kinds of things, and, and, and kids come from everywhere. And um, we use sport as a vehicle to lead to the gospel. And so just be praying this week. I think there are, actually, I think there are like over 450 kids signed up already. And about 150 of you are volunteering, so there's going to be a whole lot of people on campus this week, so be praying that God would move in great ways. I am so excited about our new series today. It's going to be, it's going to be fantastic, because we're going to dig in a little bit on the different facets of love and what really love is about. If you have more, if you're a parent, or, um, and you have more than two kids, raise, two or more kids, just raise your hand. Okay, so I fall in that category too, and, and you're going to relate to this probably um, maybe more than the next person, but here's what I discovered, and you've probably discovered this as well. We have, we have three kids, they're all grown now, but um, here's what we realized real quick, is that every one of them is different than the, than the other one. Like, they're totally unique when it comes to their personality, the way they respond, the way they act, all those things. It's like, where did these kids come from? They're so varied in the way they are, which shouldn't surprise me because... Um, I had two brothers, I'm in the middle of, of three, and uh, we were, we're all so different. But what Liz and I discovered really quick is that what worked for one won't always work for the other one. And we had to become really creative parents when it came to trying to figure out how to, how to do things like communicate to our kids. Because each of them communicated a little differently. How they understood and how they spoke and how they interacted was different from one to another based on the uniqueness of how God created them and their personalities, and we had to learn how to do that effectively. We had to learn how to express love to them, and they were unique because, it, and some of you are familiar with the book, The Five Love Languages. Uh, for those who don't know that term, this, this book's been around forever, and it basically says that each of us has a primary love language. There are five love languages that the author identifies and says we each have one of those and we use those to express love and to receive love so we had to figure that out with our kids because how one received love or expressed love was different than the next one and so on but there was another area that we didn't really think too much about at the time but we realized later that it was absolutely 100 percent had to be customized to each kid and, and that is when it came to the discipline we used each of them needed a different method of discipline. Like our oldest son, what worked for him was spankings. When you spanked him, it would get his attention, he would correct the behavior and move on. With our younger son, I don't think he was spanked maybe once or twice in his life. He didn't need it. You, all you had to do with him was kind of give him a kind of that firm tone of the voice or give him the evil eye and he would just correct his behavior and move on. My daughter, the middle one, um, spankings didn't work for her Stern words didn't work for her. Evil eye didn't work for her. Nothing worked for her. She was the one, right? She was always the strong-willed one. Thankfully, she outgrew that. She's a great mom these days. But, but it was t it's tough parenting, and it's tough to understand discipline. Now, when I grew up, I grew up in an era there wasn't a lot of customization to, to the way we disciplined. You follow me? Like, it was one size fit all when it came to discipline. We didn't have time out, right? Time out was how long you were unconscious. That was time out back in my era, right? So we didn't have time out. What we did is we had, we had discipline. But here's the thing. Although the type of discipline we may have received, I think all of us would agree that discipline is a good thing. Not good at the time, but it's a good thing. And we realize it's actually a sign of good parenting. So today we're going to look at discipline. Now, you need to understand what discipline is. Discipline is actually meant to shape a person, to form a person. The root word of discipline is disciple. And all of us, if you're followers of Jesus, we're called to be disciples. And that just simply means that we're to be formed more in the image of our Savior, Jesus, every day. And when we discipline our children, we ought to be trying to form them correct behavior so they become productive adults. Now today, what we're going to do, though, is you may be thinking, okay, we're going to be talking about parenting today. We're going to talk about earthly parenting today. No, we're not. We're going to use that because the Bible uses that, but we're really not going to be talking about earthly parenting. We're going to talk about heavenly parenting. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about heavenly discipline, divine discipline. And if you wanted to drill down further, we're going to talk about tough love, how God displays love through this thing called 
discipline, which almost sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? That discipline and love would fall in the same category, but it does, as we're going to look at today. So if you've got your Bibles, your electronic device, I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 12, and we're going to look at the first 11 verses, and the first four or five verses may be familiar to you. It's a whole separate sermon that we're not going to really get into, but we're going to focus on the latter part of what I'm going to be reading today. And here's what it says. The the writer of Hebrews says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding it's shame. Now he's seated at the place of honor beside God's throne. And that's, that's right there, the whole sermon, that Jesus went to the cross. He focused on that and he, because of the joy awaiting him. The scripture then goes on to say this. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not given your lives in your struggle against sin. And, and we're going to kind of go into where we're talking about today. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves. And he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you, As he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and you are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God, God's discipline is always good for us, so we might share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Now, again, discipline is one of those things when you, when you think about it it, 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 it tends to have a kind of a negative connotation, but, but we've got to drop that because you've got to see this in a positive light because it is a way that God displays love, although it's, it's called tough love. In fact, that's the title of my message, Tough Love, because some of us realize at, at, at some stage of our lives that Some way to express love the best to some people at some times is through this thing called tough love. That we have to put our foot down and we have to kind of love them enough to to, to be a little tough in that love. And that's what God's discipline is all about. And as we kick off this series, I'm really hoping this sets the groundwork for where we're going to be going of the rest of the series about God's love. But again, this is a facet of love that most people don't think about. So today what I want to do is I want to show you two things that the scripture teaches us about God's discipline. The first thing is this, that God's discipline is a sign of his love for his children. Again, it sounds like an oxymoron, but God's discipline is a sign of his love for his children. Contrary to what many people may think, uh, discipline is actually good parenting. It's a sign of love. Now, I think where a lot of parents, earthly parents, mess this up is that we kind of confuse our role. As a parent, God calls us to be just that, a parent. And sometimes that's going to mean that we're not really their friend too much. And they're going to really like us at times, but it's the right thing to do to discipline. And some parents are so busy trying to be their friend to their child that they never really become the parent. Now, hopefully at some point, you're going to be both of those things. And as they grow older and become adults, hopefully then you're going to have really enjoy the more of the friendship side of that. But in the meantime, during that time that God places them in under your authority that you're supposed to raise them up shape them discipline them love them through discipline so to become productive adults how many of you have ever been in a public place where there is a child who is not being disciplined and this kid is it's obvious he rules the roost in that home and he's running around like like the tasmanian devil all over the place and he's he's just like there's no respect for his parents no respect for anybody else in the room it just kind of just, have you ever been there? And now, I'm the only one that's been this in this situation. Yeah, this, this, this. Now, when you see this, you're looking at, and the parents, some of these parents are clueless. And they look at the kid, and, and you have several different responses. There are some that are totally oblivious to the whole thing. They don't want to 
they don't want to get involved. Like they know they need to do something, but they're, they're so either afraid of that child or what that child's going to think of them or they're not going to be my friend anymore or whatever they think. But they refuse to discipline their child and, and they think somehow they've confused that. They think, well, that must be how you love your kid. But no, that's not loving to allow your kid to have no respect for the rest of the world. The other response that I see some parents do is they'll try to bribe their kid in that moment. They'll say, if you're nice right now, little Johnny, little Susie, if you're nice right now, I'll give you a cookie. I mean, bribery, I mean, because they're desperate. And the other side of that coin is the parent who it doesn't do that, and is they just make a lot of idle threats. You ever those parents? Like, you better stop. You better stop or you're going to be in trouble. You better stop or, you're, or, or I'm going to take you to Chuck E. Cheese. You better stop. You better stop. I'm going to count to three. One, two, two and a half, two and three quarters. They never get to three because they don't want to discipline their child. And you know what? They're doing that child a disservice. They're not loving their child. In that moment, listen, here's what that child needs. They need some love at that moment, right, in the form of discipline. Because here's what they're getting, they need to understand, that, that the world does not revolve around them. And they're either going to learn that under their parents' tutelage, or they're going to learn it the hard way once they step outside the doors of their home when they become adults, because the world will not put up with that nonsense. It's not how the world works. They're going to get a dose of reality, and it's not going to be really good because they're not going to know how to deal with things. It's not a sign of good parenting to let your kids just run roughshod over everybody. Would you agree with that? And wouldn't it be silly if God let us do the same thing? Like, wouldn't, it would not make sense for just God to let us do whatever we want. He loves us too much for that. He loves us way too much for that. Now, in the Bible, the Bible is unbelievable, right? Because it gives the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there are some ugly stories of bad parenting in the Bible, especially when it comes to discipline. I'm going to give you two examples. One of them is through this priest by the name of Eli. Eli was a priest of Israel, and he had two sons. And his sons were going to take over when, when, when he, you know, kind of passed the baton on to them. And he was up in, in, in years, and he was getting ready for that time, and the boys were kind of learning, and, and, and they would serve in the tabernacle. But these boys were evil. And they, what they would do is the people of Israel, what they did back in those days is they'd bring their sacrifices to God into the tabernacle, and the priests would, would make the sacrifices for them. So they'd bring these animals, and these evil sons of Eli's would intercept those people coming in and steal the, the, the sacrifices meant for the Lord for themselves and keep them for themselves, literally blaspheming God. And in addition to that, they were seducing all the young women that worked in the tabernacle, making it a very unsafe place to be around with their sexual abuse. And Eli, their dad, knew about it. And yet Eli refused to discipline them. Eli confronted their behavior and said, if you don't stop, I don't know if he actually said this, but here's our picture. If you don't stop, I'm not going to give you the cookie. But he never really did anything about it. He said, hey, you know, you guys, knock it off. But that's as far as he, he went with it. Did not do anything further, and they continued in that behavior. And so when Eli didn't step up, God decided to do it for himself. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't want God giving you that kind of discipline because God cleaned house. And it cost those boys their life for blaspheming God. It cost Eli his priesthood, and Samuel became the priest after that. God did what he had to do because of what they were doing, and it was, it was a pretty bad situation. Another situation where you see a lack of discipline is with a guy by the name of King David. King David was an awesome king, but he was not a really good parent. And he had many wives, and he had a lot of kids through those wives. And his, one of his sons, his firstborn son, was named Amnon. And Amnon had a half-sister named Tamar, who he fell in love with and uh, eventually raped. And of course, she was living in shame. And then her, she had a brother named Absalom, who, her, her, her full brother, Absalom, who was really upset with his half-brother Amnon, obviously for what he had done, expecting their dad, David, to do something about it. And David hears about it and here's what the Bible says that David did. I want you to listen to this. It says that David found out he was angry, but would not discipline him because he 
loved him. And he was his firstborn. David made a mistake to thinking that somehow a discipline was a sign that he did not love him. And here's what it caused the problem. After that, since Absalom realized his dad wasn't going to do anything about it, Absalom took matters in his own hand, had his brother, half-brother Amnon killed. Then David finds out about this. David is upset with Absalom because Absalom did something and he didn't. So Absalom leaves and moves to another area. Uh, and there's a fracture of the family. Eventually, he moves closer, but there's still no communication between him and his dad. Finally, Absalom is so furious with his dad that he decides to, to have a coup over David's kingship, and he literally tries to overthrow his kingdom. David has to roll on, go on the run. Absalom is chasing him. There's a div division. Absalom ends up getting killed. David is heartbroken, and basically, there's dysfunction for the rest of their family. All leading back to an event where David will not show discipline to someone who needs it. That's not good parenting. And God is, is going to discipline when necessary because it's a good thing. And that's, it's a sign of love. It's a sign that, he is, that we're his. Here's what it says in Hebrews chapter 12, which I just read. For the Lord disciplines those he what? He loves. And he punishes each one as he accepts as his child. I'm going to stop here at the word punish there. The Bible uses punish discipline, correction, but you need to understand the heart behind it. I'm going to get further than this in just a second, but you need to understand the heart behind it. God's always when God, and there's punishment or discipline or correction, it's because of God's love. He punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who has ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. We're adopted into his family. That's what we, that we know. Here's the way that works. Okay, so the, so the Jewish people are God's chosen people. And now in New Testament times, we're given this ability to be adopted into God's family as his children with all the birthrights of the same as, as, as the Israelites. And God allows us into his family. And he says, one of the signs that you're part of his family is that you're, you're, you're seeing discipline when necessary. Because it's, it, that's, what, that's what parents do. And God loves you and he loves you enough to discipline you in times because he doesn't want you to ruin your life. And God's discipline is always motivated by love because that's what God is. God is love. Now, in uh, Proverbs 3, it says this, My child, don't neglect the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. Now, I want to kind of give you the difference between biblical discipline and maybe some earthly punishment. The big thing you need to, to really, you should be thanking God for is that he loves you enough to discipline you when, so that you, when you're in the middle of some, something that's not it's not lining up with the word of God, the Bible, or you're doing something that, that is going to harm you, that God will step in because he loves you and says, no, you're not going to do that. And, he'll, and, he'll, and he will discipline. So we're thankful. But there's a difference between the, 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 the divine discipline, biblical discipline, and earthly punishment. Let me, let me give you the difference. Punishment is about condemnation. Earthly punishment is about condemnation. But divine discipline is about correction. Earthly punishment is Punishment is about making the situation right. Divine discipline is about helping the person get right. Earthly punishment looks back and it focuses on making payment for the wrongs done. But divine discipline looks forward and the lessons learned from discipline help us not to repeat them. The result of earthly punishment is fear, guilt, and anger. The result of divine discipline is security. The motivation behind punishment is anger, but the motivation behind dis God's discipline is love. Guys, let me tell you something. We should stop and thank God for the times that he has to discipline us. Now, here's the thing that for a lot of us that we, that we're, where our struggle is, because, and we talked about it. We did a whole series about this. We called it BYOG. Remember this one, Bring Your Own God? And we talked about these different ideas that we have of who God is. And for some people, we, we, these are a couple of the titles that we did in that series. But one of them we called the, um, the God that was the get off my lawn God. Remember that one? 
stay off my lawn. That's the, that, we picture God as the, the, the mean guy that's always, like he's in heaven right now waiting for us to step out of line so he can punish us. So he can really get us after us like if you hit us with the lightning bolt that we picture god way over here and he's always like looking for a reason to, to, to inflict harm on us and then you got the other spec side of the spectrum over here and that was the one we called the the cool parent god and that was the god who doesn't do anything it's like hey whatever you want to do it's all right with me like there's never going to be any discipline like somehow that's a good sign so some people think see god that way just do whatever you want god will never put his foot down and then you get the other person over here who thinks god is the evil god who's always looking to inflict punishment but i'm going to tell you something somewhere in the middle is where it needs to be like our view of god needs to understand we're not going to get away with everything that's not good for us that's not healthy god's not loves us too much to do that and he's not evil he's not mean he's not an angry god who's always looking for a reason to do it Look, we've all, how many of you, when your parents disciplined you, said, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you? I really think that's how God feels sometimes. Like, God doesn't enjoy discipline on us. He does it because he loves us, because it's what's best for us. Which leads me to the second point, and that's this. God's discipline is for correction, growth, and our good. Anytime God disciplines you, listen, it is for correction, growth, and your good. As I think back on my life, I see, you know, something good about hindsight. You can look back at your life, and I'll, all through my journey with, with God as a believer, I've seen that any time I was kind of straying off the path a little bit, I could see God's gentle hand of discipline kind of nudging me back. And those times where I didn't respond to that, I felt God's hand a little heavier right it wasn't quite as gentle but he brought me back that way and sometimes i really don't listen and and god's hand can get even heavier and it resembles more of a two by four to get my attention you ever been there like god is like that song we sang a minute ago his love he loves us too much you know to leave us where we are right now and that's that's what god will do he'll do it as, as necessary, there are consequences when we make mistakes and when we do wrong things, and, and that's good. There should be. But it's always done in a spirit of love when it comes to God. It's always about correction. It's always about growing us up. It's always what's good for us, what's best for us. How many of you think about back in, in, in your day that your parents disciplined you, and at the time, you didn't like it? Like, I don't know of any time I've ever liked discipline at the time. But later, I see the benefit. When I was growing up, I, as I mentioned, I have a brother, I'm middle brother of three. My older brother's a year older, my younger brother's a year younger. Okay, so we're all together, and that meant we were always fighting. So we'd go on this trip, we had a station wagon, we'd go on a trip, and we'd all be, I don't know why, we, we'd all be in the middle area, there's always the back, but we'd always be in the middle, like in the middle seats together. And we could, wouldn't been on the road five minutes, and there's fighting going on. So my dad would be driving, my mom was trying to keep the peace, and we would fight about anything. Like, he's on my side. He's looking at me. He's breathing my air. You know, whatever. It would just, we'd fight. And, and so my, my parents would be like, hey, stop. But that didn't work for us. So. And, I, you, and, you know, how many of you remember your, your mom? Kind of like, like, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like, and you're, that's when we went to the back of the station wagon. We are running. And if they ever had to pull the car over, you were in real trouble. Because you could not get away. That was it. You knew you were in trouble. And that was good because there was never a time I was disciplined that I didn't deserve it. Like every time that I got in trouble is because I did something wrong. I deserved it. I remember when I was six, I turned 16 years old. I don't think the ink on my license had even dried yet. I mean, I literally had just got my license. A day, maybe two days earlier. My parents had that, another station wagon, and I'm driving a station wagon. And so I'm 16 years old. I call my buddy Mike. He's 15. I go, I got wheels. Let's go. So he gets in the car. We're driving around, and I don't even remember what we're doing. We're driving. And I get this bright idea. I guess I watched way too many movies. I'm like, you know what? Right beside the road, there's this grass swale. I'm like, I bet I could do some donuts in there. So I pull the car on the side of the road, and I'm just doing donuts, and we're going, woo, 
Woo, this is awesome. Yeah, I got wheels. I got freedom. It was fun. And then I see blue lights. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm, I'm going I'm to, like, I just got my license. I'm in trouble. So the policeman comes up and says, let me see your license. He looks at he goes, he's doing the math in his head. He goes, you just got your license yesterday. <laughs> I'm going, yes, sir. And, and he says, he goes, here's what I want you to do. I want you to follow me to the police station. I'm like, great. I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> So I literally have to get in a station wagon. I'm following a police car all the way to the police station. So I go in there, and they put me in there, and I'm like, I'm going to jail. That's it. And they don't put me in jail. They w- I'm sitting there for the longest time, and I don't realize that they call my parents. And I'm sitting there with Mike. All of a sudden, my parents come in. And I'll never forget this. They were so disappointed in me. And they were angry, there's no doubt about it, but they were embarrassed because their son, this hoodlum just got his license and he's one day and he's already getting pulled over by the police. It was just a bad situation. And I remember thinking, man, I can't believe I just did that. I was really thinking, I can't believe I got caught. That was really what I was thinking, but <laughs> I can't believe I did that. But so anyways, I knew I was in trouble. That, I knew, he didn't give me a ticket. I, it was, you know, he knew I was going to get in more trouble than a ticket. Thankfully, he didn't give me a ticket, but I had to go home, and I lost, I think I wasn't allowed to drive for a couple weeks, which was killing me, but it was what, the right thing to do. It was, you know, it, it, the, the time fit the crime, and that's, that's necessary. So when, when, but it was all about correcting me. It was all about for my good. It was because my parents loved me. They didn't want me to get in a crash, they knew that if they didn't correct that behavior, I'd go out there and do it again. They knew that I was probably going to end up dead somewhere because I was a pretty stupid kid. I mean, I just did whatever I wanted to do. I, wasn't, I needed correction. I needed someone to say, no, you're not going to do this anymore because this is going to lead to a bad place. And they did what was necessary because they loved me, not because they were mean but because they love me in hebrews chapter 12 it says for our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how but god's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness See, it's all about correction it's always about making us better than we are no discipline is enjoyable while it's happening it's painful but afterward, there'll be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. And you might put it this way, that none of us likes the process of being disciplined, but we all enjoy the benefits of what discipline does in our lives. Discipline's a good thing. Job 5.17 says this, but consider the joy of those corrected by God. Do not despise the discipline of the Almighty when you sin. There are consequences God will do what's necessary to get our attention. God loves you too much to let you just go off doing your thing. He's going he's gonna to step in, and you're going you're gonna to reap what you sow. That's what the Bible teaches. In Deuteronomy 8, it says this. Think about it. Just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord your God disciplines you for your own good. Not for his good, for your good, for my good. That's why he disciplines us, because he, it's for our good. He doesn't enjoy doing it. I, there's, like God doesn't... Like, oh, I can't wait to discipline them. But he does it because that's what we need. So let me walk through the process, and I'm going to read one more verse, and we're going to wrap up. Here's the process again. Here's what I found, How because you might be going, well, how does God discipline us, really? Like, what does that look like? For me, this is what I see, all right? The, that if we're, if we're walking with God, there's not a lot of need for discipline. It's when we start going a little south. Like we go and doing our own thing. God will kind of, again, gently nudge us back. That's what's called the conviction of the Holy Spirit. All right, that discipline is usually when we just kind of know something's not right. And, and we're, we're just not getting the peace we used to have. And that's God's way of saying, hey, hey you need to get back because when you're walking with me, things are gonna, it's, you know, everything's going to be a little better. And if we don't respond to that, then, then the conviction gets a little, a little more intense. And God will do what's necessary to bring us back. You might recall some of the stories in the Old Testament about the nation of Israel. His people, they loved so much, his children. And yet they would always kind of go off, do their thing, and God would say, 
come on back, come on back. And they would, they, would, they would disregard his voice. They would disregard the voices of the prophets that he would send. And eventually God said, if that's the way you want it, go ahead. And God would send another nation to come and take them captive, and they would become their slaves. And then they would cry out to God and say, oh, you got our attention now, God. You know, do something now. And God would move and bring them, allow them their freedom again. But that's, whatever's necessary is what God will allow. Because he loves you, he can't love you any more than he does right now. But he can't love you any less. And God is, loves you so much, he's not going to let you just live any way you want to. He loves you so much that he's going to change you from the inside. He wants, he's going to do something significant in your life. Here's what, here's what the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 uh, Corinthians. He said this, for the kind of sorrow, because this is what God is looking for when we do wrong and that discipline is meant to, to cause us to change our behavior. The Bible calls that repentance. Repentance is when, we, when we're going the wrong direction and God gets our attention whatever way is necessary, and we go, God, you're right, we're wrong, and we come back on track and we follow God again. That's repentance. And here's what it says in 2 Corinthians. For the kind of sorrow that God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow. But worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. We all know people who, who are sorry they get caught. You see it all the time when someone has to make it a public apology, some Hollywood celebrity get caught doing something wrong, and they make a, their obligatory speech with crocodile tears, but it's not real. They do it because they, want to, they don't want to disrupt their cash flow. So they do what's necessary just to put out the fire. And God says that's not the kind of sorrow he's looking for. He's looking for a sorrow that a godly sorrow turns to repentance. In other words, a change of behavior because we realize that God's right and we're wrong. It says, just see what this godly sorrow produced in use. Such earnestness, such concern to clear, to clear yourselves, such indignation, such alarm, such longing to see me, such zeal, such, uh, such a regardless uh, re readiness to punish wrong. You show that you have done everything necessary to make these things right. See, the bottom line is this, that God is, loves you too much to let you just do whatever you want to do. And he's going to use tough love as necessary. And instead of running away and, and getting mad at God, what we ought to do is say, thank you, God, that you care enough about me to now allow me to go in a direction that's going to ultimately lead to a bad place in my life. Thank you for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for the, the gentle hand, and thank you for the heavy hand that leads to repentance. Let me ask you something. Because some of you may be here today and you're going, you know what, I don't even know that I am a follower of Jesus. You know what a beautiful part of this is? Is that we talk about being children of God and if, we, if we're not feeling that discipline that we're, you know, that, we, that we're illegitimate children and we're not his children at all. Let me tell you something. Here's the great thing about the, the scripture. It tells us in John 1.12 that to, to all who believe and receive him, he gives the right to become children of God. You may be here today, you may be far from God. You may be watching online, you're far from God. You've, you've made a lot of mistakes, and you regret those mistakes. And you're thinking, is there any hope for me? Is there any way that God could love me? Is there any way I could be called one of his children? Yes. Turn from your sin and turn to Jesus. He went to the cross. He died on the cross in your place so that you can have right relationship with him. That's what it's about. And I'm going to give you an opportunity in just a moment. But some of you here today have, may have already made that decision. You've been walking with God for a long time. But you've been kind of straying off path, and God's been putting that correction on you. You're feeling the conviction of the Holy Spirit and you haven't yielded yet and you haven't repented yet and I'm just telling you, do it now. Don't wait for him to have to give you the, the, the two by four. Turn from whatever it is that's holding you back from God's best in your life. He loves you too much to just let you go any way you want. Thank God for his tough love through discipline. Let's pray together. God, thank you. None of us likes to be disciplined at that moment, but thank you for the times that, God, you correct us. You've brought us back. Because left to our own devices, we would, we would make a mess of things. We would, we would do things that would cause us, us harm, our families harm, the people around us harm. So thank you, God, that you love us enough to step in and parent us and do what's necessary. And God, I pray for those who are not even your children yet. They're, they're carrying the load of their own sin, and yet you've told them 
that they don't have to do that any longer. Because you went to a cross and you died on that cross so that we can be free. So that we can live lives of victory. So that we can live life of purpose and freedom. And maybe you're here today or you're watching online and you've never made a commitment of your life to Christ. If you will receive him, believe in him and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Turn from your sin and turn to him that he will... He will come into your life and he will change you from the inside out. He'll give you the Holy Spirit we talked about who will kind of give you that direction. In fact, the Holy Spirit, even though he's not in you, if you're not a believer, he's working uh, to, to, to convict your heart, to, to show you the need for a Savior. If you'd like to receive Jesus today, maybe offer a prayer like this. Jesus, right here, right now, I give you my life. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your sacrifice. I place my faith in you as my Lord and Savior. God, I pray for every person who maybe has been kind of veering off the path a little bit and you've been trying to get their attention and maybe today was the day and I'm praying that there would be repentance, a godly sorrow, not just, not just crocodile tears, but godly sorrow that says, I was wrong and you were right and I'm coming back. God, thank you for the love that you give us. Thank you that you are the epitome of love. Thank you that you are love. And as we study this over the next several weeks, God, show us a new dimension every single week of how much you love us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, what an awesome message today. What a way to kick off the new series on love. And if you decided today was the day that you wanted to give your life to Jesus, that you took that next step, we want to celebrate with you and we want to walk alongside of you. So here's all that you need to do is go to Foothills dot cc slash connect fill out that connect card let us know that you took that next step today and a pastor will be reaching out one to celebrate you on this next step and two to walk with you and give you some pointers on where to go absolutely and we have several ways we can stay connected through the week um, be sure to share this sermon on your social media platforms um, other people can tune in and watch it throughout the week we have um, our sermons on YouTube um, you can listen to those on Spotify as well and we also have our foothills.cc slash connect where you can let us know if you have any prayer requests if you have any questions throughout the week if you um, want to get plugged in and find ways to serve we would love to reach out um, and get you connected but we hope you guys have an incredible week we will see you back here next week either online or in person um yeah hope you have a great week see you soon